Right. Perfect. Well, hello everyone. Um, I'm excited to spend some time with you today to talk about using book creator for reading responses. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I'm going to just expand this a bit here um, so that we can go ahead and jump in. So some of you already said hello in the chat area, which is awesome. Um, if you want to say hello, uh, maybe share where you're from. I'll give some shout outs as we get ready to jump in. Um, welcome Chris from California and Sally um, from uh, Seattle. Um, I know it's hard right when there's everyone on Zoom uh, type of video. I saw that message come in. Welcome Carolyn from Maryland and Melanie from Edmonton. I'm excited folks are from all over uh, joining us today. Now this webinar is being recorded so if you have to step out a little early um, or you want to watch the replay Play or you want to share the recording link with a friend or colleague, the folks at Book Creator do a fantastic job of putting webinars like this one on their YouTube channel. So if you don't already subscribe to Book Creator's YouTube channel, I definitely recommend. That way you'll get a little ping or alert uh, when new videos go live and I'll make sure to send out the recording from today as well. So we're gonna talk about using Book Creator for reading responses. Uh, looks like most of you found the Zoom webinar chat. So on your Zoom screen, you're gonna have the chat area there. You are welcome to put questions in there or to put questions in the Q&A area. I'm going to do my best to take a peek at that as we're moving through the webinar today, but we'll also save some time at the end uh, for Q&A too. So if you have a question, I don't get to it right away, um, we'll scroll back. And John from Book Creator is here on the webinar today. So if you are um, asking questions about things that he has a resource, he'll put that resource in the chat area or respond to your um, Q&A or your question with that A answer. Um, so know to stay on the lookout for that too. So welcome. This is one of the seven webinars I'm hosting for Book Creator on Wednesdays this spring. We're about halfway through the series with a couple more coming up and a few that are already on Book Creator's YouTube channel. If we haven't met before, um, my name is Monica Burns. I'm a former New York City public school teacher. I'm out of the classroom now and I live in New Jersey, uh, not too far from New York City, just on the other side of the river. I'm a Book Creator ambassador and EdTech and curriculum consultant, and you may have seen my blog, classtechtips.com, um, or you might have followed along on Instagram or Twitter. My handle is at classtechtips, and I love connecting on social media. So if you're on Instagram, you might have seen that I did an Instagram story uh, this afternoon with a shout out to the webinar happening today and some tweets um, with reminders. But if you are snapping pictures of your screen today, want to share an idea that you got um, from our event today, feel free to tag me at Class Tech Tips wherever you share. Uh, that way I can check in with you and um, just hear and see what you are excited about. So today we are going to talk about some uh, remote learning resources from Book Creator. So I'm going to point you to some resources specific to the learning that is taking place right now as students are outside of the classroom or learning from home or not in a traditional classroom setting. We're going to do a super quick overview of Book Creator just so you get um, an idea, some key points about things or Book Creator to um, keep in mind as we're talking today. And then we'll spend the bulk of our time looking at activities for reading literature and informational text, reading connections across content areas. I'm going to keep sharing my screen, but move away from my slide deck onto the web. So to show you Book Creator in action and hoping that if you feel comfortable, um, maybe you're kind of doing some double duty uh, this afternoon and folding laundry and watching or something. But if you are in front of your computer, I'll encourage you to check out Book Creator on the web and click on a bunch of things and try it out alongside with me. Um, so I'd love to hear from you in that chat area, just so I have a sense of where you're at um, when it comes to using Book Creator. How familiar are you with Book Creator? Um, maybe you plug an emoji into the Zoom webinar chat with like a thumbs up um, or something, or maybe you want to share that you've used it a couple times, you've used it um, only on iPads, you've never used it before, you're totally new to Book Creator, which is awesome as well. Um, so I'm seeing a couple 
people share on where they're at. So a lot of folks who are new to Book Creator, who have just um, started using it, who love ed tech but are new to Book Creator, um, have used it a lot, um, learn Chromebooks and iPads, have attended a bunch of webinars. So there are a bunch of folks in all different um, kind of familiarity with the tool um, and how well um, they've used, how well they know Book Creator and how well they've used it in the past. So no worries today. This is useful for me to have a sense of where we're at, um, those of us on the call. If you're totally new to Book Creator and at any time I'm pressing buttons or moving a little fast, know that we're recording this, of course, but also um, there are a lot of getting started with Book Creator webinars um, that are coming up on the calendar, and there are lots of support materials and trainings that are recorded, so you can check out too. So if any time I'm moving a little fast or you miss something, know that that resource is there for you, and also know that you can use that same chat box um, to ask any questions. Now, I want to just set the stage for today, um, acknowledging the fact that a lot of the use of the tool, right, and use of ed tech in general is happening outside of the classroom as schools are making a quick shift to remote learning. And those of you who are joining in before our five o'clock start time might have heard John and I sharing a little bit about conversations and observations, right, that we're having with educators in different spaces, right, as they're tackling uh, remote learning challenges. So there um, is an ebook resource full of activity ideas um, from the folks at Book Creator. If you are new to the tool, you might not know that there's actually a collaborative option where kids can collaborate on books. That's usually a paid feature, but they're offering an extended free trial for that. There are webinars from the folks at Book Creator um, that help support this too, just like you're here today. And there's also a special workflow that I'm going to start off with talking about um, that is going to be important to consider when you talk about remote learning. So we'll go through that together today and you'll hear me reference both inside the classroom and outside the classroom strategies for putting into place the reading response activities um, that we're going to talk about today. And John just put in the chat area um, the link for the big book of um, book creator activities, as well as the webinar series. Um, you might want to copy and paste those and bookmark them so you don't miss them because um, there's really great stuff on their website. So let's go through and do a quick um, overview of Book Creator, especially for those of you who are new, just to give you some context. So Book Creator is an open-ended creation tool, meaning it's not just for reading responses. You could use it for science, you use it for math journals, it's open. You can use it on iOS on an iPad, you can use it on Chrome like a Chromebook, or you could use it on any web browser. Today, as I'm talking to you, I am on my MacBook. Um, I am using the Chrome web browser. I happen to have my iPad next to me, right? I could run Book Creator on my iPad, but you're gonna see it in the Chrome web browser on my MacBook today, but it works on the web in different web browsers as well as on iPads, um, but that's gonna be the way I will demo it uh, for you uh, this afternoon. There is the opportunity for both students and teachers to create and publish books. So anyone can be a creator and book creator. You might make a book to share with students or hopefully by the end of today, you get some ideas that will encourage your students to become creators within this space. It is super simple and easy to make interactive pages with voice, text, video, and images. Um, I'm confident by the time you leave here today, you will be pressing the plus sign. You will be adding things to a page in Book Creator, and I'm hoping you'll get a chance to get hands on with me. Um, it is something you can use with students of all ages. Uh, I am no longer a classroom teacher. I've been out of the classroom um, hosting professional development for a couple years now, but I spend a lot of time in classrooms. And just earlier this calendar year, um, before um, or, you know, our shift to being at home, um, I was in a classroom with a group of fourth graders helping their teacher um, work through some collaborative learning experiences. And we looked at Book Creator and the kids were in there and making crazy things. It was awesome. So this is something you could use with all ages and you'll see resources on Book Creator's site that really span that K-12 range. Now, uh, teachers can create libraries for students. You're going to hear me mention that as we go through today. So this is something that 
is a awesome workflow when we talk about remote learning as well as classroom learning um, when it comes to creating libraries. So, so much that you can do with Book Creator. I just wanna give this context for those of you who might be new. Today, we're gonna to focus in on reading responses, but you could use this for digital portfolios, poetry books, step-by-step -step guides, science reports, learning journals, comics, you name it, a super duper um, open-ended, right? You could go in any different direction that you want. Now, with Book Creator outside of the classroom, you're going to see me go through this workflow in a moment. You are going to be introducing it a little bit differently if it's something new to your group of students. So you might be on a Zoom call like this one, showing things or creating a quick tutorial or just having this as a recommendation for families as opposed to an expectation for families. You're going to want to set up a teacher account share your login protocols, whatever they might be with families, and then you'll have an opportunity for checking in on student books. Now, one thing I wanna make sure to mention, and if you are here on this call, right, this is something you already know, and I just wanna make sure you know that I'm on the same page with you with acknowledging right, our current challenges in the midst of this public health crisis, right? everyone's access and priorities will vary when we're talking about our school community. So as you are positioning this resource, um, just a reminder to keep that in mind, you might use this as something supplemental. Um, so you might create a library today and invite families to create books in that library. You might have a call where you support families and share some of the things we talk about today more along the lines of ideas rather than expectations because we know that families are handling a lot of things both from a health and an economic standpoint, of course. So I'm going to encourage you, and you'll see me do it in a moment, to go to app.bookcreator.com. This is where you can sign in to Book Creator. Even if you're on an iPad today, you can open up the Chrome browse, web browser, Safari web browser on your iPad and find the same screen. Now, when I am here at app.bookcreator.com, I'm going to switch because I'm not a student and click on the teacher sign in. That's going to allow me to sign in with Google, Office 365, or email, or with a Clever integration. Now, when your kids get here and they get to the student page, you'll have wanted to set up the library already because when you set up your library, you get a special join code, and that's how you invite your kids in, whether they're working in a classroom right next to you or they are working remotely at home. Once you're inside of Book Creator in your teacher dashboard, mine's pretty full because I <laughs> use Book Creator all the time, um, you'll be able to create a new library. And when you create that library, you then click on the invite code button and that's what you give to students. So this is a workflow that's really important and right now front of mind when we're talking about just learning at a distance, right? You will create your account, you will have a library, you will create a new library and you get that invite code to share with students. So what I would, um, encourage you to do right now is to watch or follow along with me. You saw me go through those steps. I'm going to do it live for you in just a moment here. Um, and if you want to play along and create with me, um, you can sign in and create a new account or you can sign in to your um, account. So if you'll be able to access it all the time, I saw a question come in about finding the code. I'm going to take you out here to show it to you um, right now. So I'm already logged in to Book Creators website. Um, because I've created a whole bunch of things, um, this is going to be um, a lot of things right here inside of my library. I could go down here and create a new library, but I have already made one for this month in the webinars. Once I create my library, my invite code is always going to live up here at the top. So this is the code that I would give to students if I want them to sign in. And as you saw John share there, you would give this code to students because they are going to get to the same page that you see um, here on my slide deck. They are going to sign in with Google, Office 365, maybe with a QR code, um, or they could sign in with Clever, and then they are going to um, use that code that you gave them and they're gonna go into your library. And if for some reason you can't find the code or you uh, misplace it, I'm just gonna X out of this window and bring up our book creator one, or you misplace it, right? It'll be up here at the top, the invite code. You can always expire this code. Um, so that is something that you could do as well. Um, so if you wanted to close it down um, or reset, with a new code. So I just wanna share that process with you. I'm gonna encourage you to um, try it out. 
and play along as we go through, but I want to jump into our reading specific examples um, so that you can see um, some different things that you might want to explore. So we'll start off today before going into some activities with two blog spotlights. Book Creator has an awesome blog. So on their blog, you'll see lots of examples of things that teachers have created with their class. There are lots of stories that you can learn about. So if you're at bookcreator.com, like you see the link right here, you can search their blog or you can look by different um, groups like ELA, right, or reading, or or even math or science, if you're interested in those two. Um, Mira Campbell has an awesome blog post that talks about hosting a book tasting uh, with Book Creator. Tara M. Martin um, talks about book snaps uh, with her blog posts that she wrote for Book Creator. So these are ones from the archive you might want to check out um, if you are looking for some creation activities uh, with Book Creator. So let's take a look first before we dive into the activities that we're going to try out together today at the two categories that we're going to look at. So we're going to look at some activities that you can use with literature or reading experiences, so historical fiction, biography, Biographies, realistic fiction, and more, as well as with informational text or nonfiction text when we're talking about current events, blog posts, things kids might read and be ready to respond to um, from a textbook. And so with all of the pieces that we're going to look at, I'm going to share with you an example of what it might look like in action, but please um, use your knowledge of your content, of your expectations, of your standards, of what you want your students to be able to do in this space to drive the expectations that you set for them and how you frame this activity, um, whether it falls into one of the dozen or so categories that we'll look at today. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to share with you some activities. You're welcome to snap a picture, post it, share it on social media, take a screenshot so you don't forget something. But of course, we're um, recording this. So if you ever want to go back and take a closer look at a few of these, it'll be here waiting for you. So the first one is to create a daily journal. You might have a set expectation for what this looks like already for your students. So you might have them traditionally add a title, author summary and maybe add something special related to a prompt that you have for them. So all of those are options. And as you see here on this page, you have a combination of colors, um, the border, right? You can add audio, you can add text to the page. So all options here. So a daily journal is something that is a routine your students might already be used to. You might do a weekly journal in a remote environment where you just want kids to respond every once in a while. And you can do that right here from within Book Creator. Another option is to have students create a character profile. You might have them pull evidence from the text, use images that connect to the setting or what that character is like or where they live. You might have them create their own illustrations so they can draw right within Book Creator or maybe even snap a picture of something that they've illustrated with markers or uh, colored pencils or crayons and then add that snap um, onto their page. You might give them a really specific prompt or just say, make a page all about your character. So I was working in an elementary school not too long ago where they were using Book Creator to have kids each make a page about a character from the book Wonder. So they had all read it as a whole class novel. The students chose one character that they identified with or really felt connected to, and they made a page um, for that one character and they put it into a collaborative book. So our first two are daily journals and then having students do a character profile. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this might look like here with Book Creator. I'm just going to close that one down and grab this one here. Here we go. So I'm inside of my library. Now you would have already gone through the steps of setting up a library, sharing the app.bookcreator.com link and then giving that code so students jump in. When students are in your library, because you gave them the code, you'll be able to see everything that they make. So we're gonna to go to new book, which is what your students would do, and then they are going to create. So for this example, I'm gonna choose the landscape because it fills up my whole screen and will give you everything right here um, on the page. So let's just kind of see everything a little bit more clearly. 
page. And so right up here at the top, I have my plus sign, and this is where I'm gonna add things. So if we were making the cover for a reading journal, um, you might have students add a whole bunch of their favorite things, but we're gonna just do this model as just one page within a reading journal. So you might have students start off with the text tool, and they might put in something like the title of the book that they read or the date that they read. So I'm gonna put in title, and I'm gonna put the evolution of Calpurnia Tate, one of my favorite read aloud, um, which is a book club books um, to do with students. So I'm gonna put that in italic. I'm not gonna worry about sizing or font, that's gonna come later. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. That's gonna add this to my page. I can stretch it out and anything that's highlighted in blue, so I'm gonna tap on it. I can go to the inspector button. I can make the font bigger or smaller. I can change the actual font itself. Um, if you haven't used the open dyslexic font, this is wonderful. If you're working with students uh, with dyslexia or students who are creating something for other students to read that would appreciate that, or you might give kids more flexibility. So we'll go ahead and put that here. I'm actually gonna go back to my inspector button because I wanna change the color. So I want that to be blue. And if I do the background, I could do dark blue and it'll pop like that. So I can put this here on the page. Now, of course, a reading response like a daily journal is totally up to you, right? So, oh, I'm glad to hear, Avani, you love that book too. It's a favorite. I love strong female character YA books, and this one's a favorite, and it's historical fiction, so it checks a lot of boxes for me, um, and my fifth graders loved it. But I'm going to go back up here to the plus sign. So this is where you would say to yourself, what kind of things would I traditionally expect in a, a daily journal or weekly journal? And then what kind of things can I do now that I couldn't do before because I'm using a digital tool? So where's the value add is usually the term I like to think of when we're making this switch to a digital space. So you might have kids um, take the pen tool and they might draw a picture of something from the book. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use auto draw here. So in this book, um, the main character is always looking for things. She's always out um, kind of trying to gather information. She's investigating things. So she might have like a magnifying glass here. Um, I've got some lollipops here. Let's see if auto draw helped me out here with any of these. You can tell my magnifying glass wasn't a, a terrific one. We'll see here if, it, if I put that extra piece right in here. This is not one I draw all the time, but let's see if I can get it here. Well, you know what? We'll use a key as our symbol here because we'll say she's always trying to unlock new information from different places. So we can stretch that a bit. So there's the auto draw here. If you wanna draw something, you might have kids add an emoji to the page, like how much did you love the book that you read today? So maybe they'll say something like, this was a funny book, um, today's chapter made me laugh, or today's chapter made me cry, right? So they could go in here and add something here. Maybe they even search for stars and they add a couple stars to say this was a five star chapter and they can combine emojis on here. So I'm making kind of a messy example for you, but just so that you see the features, they could add something like here at the top of the page. Now, if your kids are gonna give a reading response that's more of a summary of what they read or respond to a prompt, you can use the text tool again and they can type in or they can use voice to text. So let's try this out together. Today I finished chapter five and I was so surprised at what happened to the main character. So pretty good in terms of capturing my voice and my Long Island accent that's still here a little bit, even though I live in New Jersey now. So a, a hard combination sometimes with my vowels, um, but you can see here, this is pretty good to go. I can hit done and add it onto the page. Now, especially if you have students who might struggle with voice to text, or you just know that they would feel better recording their voice, they can hit the plus sign, they can go to record, and they could give their summary um, in audio format. So they might say, today I finished chapter five, blah, 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 stop the recording, and we'll just add this recording to the page. So these are all the types of elements you might combine or you might give kids some choice and this would um, help them kind of figure out how they want to respond to a prompt. So it's a great way to differentiate the product kids are creating for you to show what they know when it comes to a reading response. So let's jump back into our list and I'll come back over here. So, so far we looked at journals, which you can really customize, um, character profiles, which you of course um, can lead into discussions with students where you might say, what color is the best one to put in the background? What connects to the character? So you have all of that um, as opportunities um, to think about too. 
So next up is to have kids do a comic retell. Now, if you haven't used the comic features in Book Creator, they are fantastic. And it's wonderful for having kids think about sequence and setting. So with a comic, you have to put things in order. You have your boxes there of scene to scene to scene or action, action, action in one scene. And you have to think about the setting of where something takes place. And you have the opportunity to add captions to set the stage with what a narrator might say if this was a movie movie version of a scene from a book, and you can add big action words. Um, so that is something to think about as you are pulling in all of those pieces, right? What your expectations might look like. Let's jump back out so you can see a book creator um, in action. I'm going to hit the um, arrow here and I'm going to go ahead and create a new page. And now if I go to, oops, you know what, because I'm in comic book mode, I want to start fresh because I want to go here to new book and then choose my comic background. And I'm going to choose a landscape again. Now comics are more than just like a fun, silly thing. Right? It's something that you can do uh, a lot of heavy thinking when students are sequencing and having to make decisions about setting um, and what kind of things they're adding. So just a lot um, to think about. So I'm going to go to the plus sign. And now you didn't see this before. You only had media when I didn't choose comic modes. So I'm going to go to comics and choose panel. And this is if you're thinking about sequence or retelling a part of a book, you might do the panels that kind of go first, then finally, or first, then next, next, finally. And you might want five of them, right? So you would give kids direction if you're talking about temporal words. So those words that signal the change of time, um, that's something that you might bring into conversations here too. So here I'm going to go to the inspector button and I want to choose a background here. I can choose something really fun and comic-y. There's a whole bunch of awesome comic um, backgrounds. And then when I go into each cell, I can go ahead and add the picture. So I could take a picture right now, which would just show you the selfie cam of me without my uh, Zoom virtual background, or I can go ahead and search for a picture. So if you haven't tried this before, Book Creator has an image search from Google built right in. You can also add a file uh, and you can add something from Drive. So if you have a picture back, you know, that you've already taken, maybe you went on a community walk and you snapped some pictures that are like the setting of a book, um, you can totally do that too. So let's pretend that you just read a book with your students or you read an article, because you could do this for an informational um, piece too, all about um, Badlands National Park. Now I've got pictures on my computer, from a trip a couple summers ago, but that's a whole nother story, right? I could add those files if I wanted to, but here, if I click on one of these, um, it will tell me the source right down there at the bottom so I can make sure that I feel good about it, right? Where it comes from, if it comes from Pixabay and I know it's gonna be good to go, I can hit select, right? All of them you can add, totally up to you. I happen to love Pixabay, so I tend to go for those ones. I can reposition it and move it in whatever direction. I can even zoom in by grabbing one of these, and then I can keep going going down here and adding pictures that go scene by scene. So when I want to add those signal words, I could go to text here and I could choose something that's a little bit more low key, uh, like a caption, or I could choose something big and bright. Um, like if I want to do first to really show that I know what the passage of time looks like, um, I could add that right here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, go to inspector and increase the size like that and add that right here. And I could keep going through. Now, just because this is a comic doesn't mean you can't add audio. So if you wanted to add audio, um, you could definitely do that too. So I love comics when we talk about going through um, the timing of things. So that's something that um, you can kind of think about what your expectation is for students when it comes to um, what you'd like to see them put in a retail. For any of the project ideas for reading responses we talk about today, I definitely encourage you to make one first, right? Make an exemplar, share that with students so they can envision where you're heading. Um, you might have a checklist that goes along with this too. So lots of things that you might um, think of when it comes to this as well. So all things to consider when you're saying, why are we doing reading responses? What do I want to see? And then what have I modeled or set as an expectation for kids? Let's keep jumping into our list of ideas. If you have questions, um, keep them coming through. John is there in the chat and he's monitoring the Q&A as well. Um, and I will make sure to review and he'll kind of jump in as well if there's something um, that I want that I need to talk about kind of in the moment and we've saved some time for Q&A at the end as well. So another reading response activity 
is a setting description. So you might have a response that's really focused on the setting. And now what's great about this is you might have kids pull a quote from the author that tells about the setting or the description that helps them envision where the book took place or the scene took place or a short text that they're reading. And then you could have students add a picture that they found that represents the setting. So this is a great way for them to use a Google image search. Uh, what I love about doing image searches is that it requires kids sometimes to problem solve, right? Um, if you've ever been next to a kid who's searching for something, especially if they have a very specific vision in mind, right, it takes a little bit of time for them to think of the keywords and what other words they could put in. And so it's a great vocabulary building activity for kids to say, you know what, if I put in forest, I might not get the right picture, especially if I'm talking about a rainforest and maybe Maybe I want a toucan in the background, right? So you can have some great conversations with students that help them um, apply different vocabulary um, terms into their work too. Next up on our activity list is to have students write an alternate ending. So they might create a page that gives an alternate end ending to a book that they have read. Um, this is a great one for we're doing a class read aloud. So if you've all read the same book or kids have participated in a book club or literature circle, you might have them create their own new ending and then share it with other kids who have also read the book. So especially if there's a story that maybe doesn't resolve the way your kids would want to, they could add in their own resolution. They might put in a new character or place more emphasis on another character in their alternate ending, or it could really format with a what if this happened, right? I'm envisioning what might happen if they are um, extending the story, if you will. Now, I mentioned that this could be something you would do collaboratively, so I want to expand upon that so you see what I mean. So if you have students creating books um, within your library, you'll be able to see all the books they created. So I've got my um, little reading journal here. I've got my other one with the comics, right? So if you wanted to combine a page from every kid's book, you totally could. They just need to be in the same library. So you would want all your kids to be in the library. You would tell them, I want you each to create a page that gives an alternate ending and you can set it up. So if I go to settings here, you can say kids cannot read each other's book and you can turn that off if you wanted to. So they wouldn't even be able to see their other um, classmates alternate endings. Of course, there's a benefit to letting them see each other's books because they can provide feedback. Um, and so there's value there, but just depends on what you're looking to accomplish with a specific task. If you have a bunch of books from different kids in your library and you do want to combine pages, you'll see that there are buttons down here at the bottom. If I hit combine books, it's going to show you all the books in the library. Now, these are ones that I made um, in previous webinars that we've hosted. So I only have four books from me, two of which I made today, um, but you might have 30 for all your kids in here. So then you can click on the books that you want to combine, see how it shows it down at the bottom of the page. And I say, you know what, I don't really need to put this one in. And then when you hit next, it'll put your combo. So if you were going to do an alternate endings book that your class put together, you would create this combination of a book. You could get in there once it's created, make a new cover for it. Um, and if you had kids that maybe they put like two pages in their book by accident, or there's a blank page like you see here, you can go in and delete them or you can rearrange them. The rearrange is great if you have kids making an ABC book as part of a reading response too, because then you could put the A, the B, and the C in the correct order. Um, I'm hosting a webinar in the next couple weeks for Book Creator that talks more about collaboration. So if this is something that grabbed your attention, um, we're gonna dive in a little bit more to that in a couple weeks. Let's keep going down our list. So alternate ending, awesome for collaboration. You might have kids also take a book selfie. Um, so they can um, do this collaboratively in eBooks too, of course. They might each make a page and you combine them. Or they might take several book selfies, say over the course of April or May, that show off all the books they read if they were home. So I have a book um, with um, Martine Brown's book. I just interviewed her earlier today for my podcast. It's going to go live on Tuesday, so it's sitting next to me. right? So you could have kids hold up the book take a selfie because there's that camera tool and book creator, and then they could add that to their page. Of course, if you don't want them using the camera, maybe it's disabled on the device that they have at home with them. 
um, you can um, have those um, opportunities for them to import images from another source, like you saw me grab that Badlands picture um, too. So another option. You might have kids make a picture collage after they've read something. This is especially great um, for informational text, so kids can snap photos, they can curate images doing that Google image search, they can label and annotate. So say they're reading a book all about Washington, D.C., or you gave them a Newzella article that talked about the federal government, right? They could look for some symbols or some things in Washington, D.C., and they could add it to the page and add those audio components that talk about why they chose those pictures. So totally up to you. You might also have kids do a question collection. So if you are having them capture some wonderings that they have, um, they can put those recordings with their I'm wondering about or here are all my questions about the coral reef. Something like this with a question collection, including an audio component is really helpful if you're working with kids that might be hesitant to type something because they're worried that they can't spell something or they are getting hung up on their sentence construction. And if this is not the time for that, right, their composition of their sentences or something, and you're not super focused on that in this moment, you really want to get their wheels spinning about a particular topic, then audio is a great option um, as well. So just something to think about here. Now, as we keep moving through with some more examples, you might have kids do a biography spotlight. Maybe they choose some notable events, some accomplishments, or some quick facts about someone they studied. So you might have them record their fact or type their fact in. So you're seeing me use a lot of audio today because I think it's a great way to have kids respond, but you could do the same thing and have kids type out a paragraph or a response, right? So it's really customizable in terms of what's gonna be the best fit for, for you um, and your students. And you can differentiate that within your class, of course. You might encourage some students to talk and record their voice, and you might have other students write their responses or use voice to text. You might give this as choices for students to pick from themselves, or you might just have students respond in different ways based on um, their individual needs. The recording feature is great because you can talk in any language, right? You could make any sounds you want, frankly, right? So that audio button is great for that reason, for having kids respond um, in different ways. So just something to, to think about. Next up is more of an emphasis on vocabulary again. So you can have kids search for pictures, um, put labels, um, collect all of the vocabulary around a topic. This might also work for kids making their own personal dictionary. So if they're reading something and they're coming across new words or they're making a list of the 10 most important vocabulary words in their science textbook chapter, right, they could make a page for each word or they could make a list of them and put them here on the page. Now, you might also have kids create books with class favorites. So this is something where you might have them reflect at the end of a month and talk about a book that they loved, um, doing this with audio or with text. So something to consider here with all of these activities. Now, these are ones you could absolutely do in a classroom everyday setting. And they're also ones that you might want to consider thinking about for a learning at home where you're using these more as suggestions um, as opposed to having kids um, do something that is kind of on um, their own without any support. You might share this with families and say to them, if you want to, right, you can, all right, do this at home. Here's a video that shows you how to use Book Creator, or I'm going to talk about it on our monthly Zoom call, right? So you have a lot of things that you could, um, could think about when it comes to doing these sort of activities, you know, with your, your group of kids. Now I do want to make some connections to different content areas, and then I'm going to just kind of take you through some of the steps I followed um, as well. And if you have questions, if you have ideas of some ways you might use this for reading, this is a great time to start popping them in that chat box so we can make sure we get your questions answered and we can give you a shout out uh, when you have some awesome ideas to share too. So if you are doing this in a science classroom, you might have kids read a biography, explore a current events article, or create an interactive page that could be added to their textbook. So this is a great way to take some things that kids have already done during the school year and give them a new way to share their learning. So if you, for example, had kids in the month of February where you were all together as a class um, create 
or say read a bunch of biographies, do a lot of research, maybe they wrote an essay about it, or they did a presentation, or maybe they dressed up like that person um, and did kind of a living museum in your classroom. Well, your kids already know that person. They've done the research. They may have that notebook home with them, right? Um, this is an opportunity for them to create a product where um, they are taking all of their work and research and now making a visual piece. So this is something that you could consider as an extension or a recommendation um, for working at home with students. Now in a social studies classroom, you might have kids respond to a passage, retell a moment in history, um, read a current events article, and then respond to it. So lots of things that you might want to do when it comes to these types of prompts or these kind of activities with your students. So daily updates, um, daily responses, weekly updates, goal setting, monthly reflections, digital portfolios, you name it. Um, there are so many ways to have kids making and creating um, right from within Book Creator. So before I kind of take you um, to an online resource that is useful for thinking about this. Keep putting in any questions that you have into that Zoom chat. Um, put in any ideas that you have so we can give you a shout out. So let's head back over to Book Creator's website. I shared with you a couple different activities that you might have kids do. And I just wanna take you through that process because I saw some questions come in about that kind of creation and inviting kids in. So if you are brand new to Book Creator, it will prompt you right away to set up a library um, and get that code to share with students. If you've used Book Creator, but maybe not recently, you would head to your library. So remember, I was here in my books. I hit the three um, lines right there. I go to library and down at the bottom also gives me an opportunity to create a new library. This is where I would make my library. I could turn on and off Google image search, giving kids the ability to um, edit books and read each other's books and then um, whether or not they can publish their books online. So those would be things that you would take into consideration um, yourself with that. If we head over to resources, as I mentioned when we first got started, um, there are resources for pre-K um, all the way to high school. There's resources outside of just um, ELA, but for math and science here. And there is a book. So I put together a book for Book Creator with 15 ways to use Book Creator for reading responses. Um, this has some of the activities um, that we talked about today. Of course, the webinar is being recorded, but you have that too. And I'm going to copy that and put that in the chat area so that you um, have that um, as well. So I'm gonna send that out to you so that you have that link um, as well. And you can grab it from the same place um, that I was at um, when I talked about <laughs> how to get to the resources. So um, John, I don't know if there's questions that have come through that you want me to um, address before we kind of finish up with some remote um, learning resources. So if you have some, you're welcome to jump in um, and ask, but I want to make sure that everyone knows um, that they there is an awesome book creator Facebook group. So if you go to Facebook and you just type in book creator teachers, you'll be able to find it there. Um, they have Twitter chats and newsletter that goes out every month, um, a support page. And of course, um, during this time for remote learning, the folks at book creator have lots and lots of webinars. If you go to bookcreator.com slash webinars, you'll see all of them. And I've got a couple more that I'm hosting for them um, this spring. Um, so I'll keep that kind of up there. And then John, are there any um, questions that came through that you want to make sure I don't miss here as I'm reviewing the chat? Yeah, I think um, I think we're getting to most of the questions. Uh, there is always a little bit of confusion between the iPad app versus the online version. Um, and so I really uh, just encourage you, everybody, to, to just kind of in your head think that the iPad app and the online version are just completely separate. Mm -hmm. um, that's really the only way to think about it. Uh, there are ways that you can do the online version on the iPad using Safari, uh, but if we keep in our head that the iPad app and online version are completely separate, it does make the conversation a little bit easier, uh, and I, I get it. It's totally confusing uh, when I even look at it and try to explain it to people too, mm -hmm. So, um, but if we just keep them separate, that'll, that'll be a good uh, starting point. 
Good. Yeah. And um, with folks who are on Chrome, especially if you're bouncing around between different devices, then being on the Chrome um, web browser is great because your kids can just sign in uh, from wherever uh, they happen to be. And so that makes it uh, really easy for them to kind of find their project where they left off. And same thing goes if they're using a device at home, they can kind of pop around to different ones. So as I mentioned, um, we're going to send out the recording of today's event for you. I'll be back next Wednesday talking about collaboration. So if the collaboration uh, piques your interest or caught your attention. We'll talk more about it. And then in May, we're going to look at social studies project ideas, um, some favorite apps to use um, with Book Creator. So that is something that um, you may want to um, check in and join um, in with us for. And of course, if you have um, questions, if there are other things that pop up um, and you want to chat or talk about, um, you can always uh, reach out to me or reach out to the folks at Book Creator and we can um, make sure to get more answers to your questions. So thank you all so much for joining today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Monica.